joints on the ledge Live in the hills, but I still get a spread Something for the live, but I still reinvest it Fear how I feel, then you feel less a blessing I just want the lesson, I just want protection I'm up and I'm down, but the sound like progression Mama never plans if he waits for perfection I Finger to the down, hold it Alright ladies and gentlemen, I got your watch list coming in on August 18th, 2021 And today was one of the biggest days we've seen all month And I got three stacks that I'm looking at tomorrow And we're going to go over a big trade that I made on the banks As well as a couple of other details to set us up for the rest of the month here So we got a lot to talk about I'm going to go over everything that happened today Again, one of the biggest days that we've seen all month Things kind of got awoken And surprisingly, the U.S. kind of dropped the baton today they did not do as good following the european close we came back up here but all of this stuff that we saw it really just added to the perfect storm scenario however the market is still eyeing the fed and we got to hear from jerome powell for today as well too so we got a lot i got the keys i got the plays the plays that i made today the ones that i'm looking at and a couple of other theories and ideas and then everything else for the rest of the week so uh, let us not delay you guys know what you need to do drop your thumbs up on the video Make sure you're subscribed, and if you don't know, we are live Monday through Friday, 30 minutes for open. It's the first link in the description, and it is pinned in the comments. We better see you there in the morning. It's free 99. It costs you nothing to join. YouTube.com slash the stock market. You can post the play, see the plays, watch the watch. Let's come to life, and yes, we got to hurry. Quickly get to the bonds. Come with me if you want to yet. Uh, what's, what's this guy talking about? No, 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 no. No one's looking at the bonds. If you like all of the, the macroeconomics in the, uh, the, the stock market, then yeah. We're the place to be, baby. And the most important thing you need to do, post your watch below. Let us know what you're looking at. Got any plays, comments, remixes, anything. Post them below and source that info. Shout out to Chad, baby. So right off the bat, today was literally the perfect storm in the sense that you got a lot of factors that kind of just all came together, not to mention how we opened up this week with the Afghan situation, but we had retail sales number that came in very, very soft. It's kind of showing that the stimulus spending is slowing down a little bit. Housing data pretty much cratered. We are going to get more data on that, but so far that was just a bad overall print. China came in with more escalation as far as how they're regulating their tech companies. Then you had more of the Afghan situation. You got the first comments by the Taliban press and what they were, I don't even know what to call it, but what they were saying and then our reactions as well we'll go over that when we get to the news and events and then on top of it you got more lockdowns overseas but specifically New Zealand got their first case of transmission or community transmission and they have went into a nationwide lockdown we talked about this today but this is getting more important now and yes the Fed has something to do with it the market is waiting for the Fed but right now the issue isn't if the United States is going to go on lockdown but looking at the trajectory right now it is if everybody else does so a lot of people over the last few weeks have been going back and forth some people are highlighting well maybe we are going to get a lockdown here and again this is just my opinion here but it seems like we've taken this idea that we're going to live with the virus but now you're watching all these other countries overseas even China the port all of that stuff and now New Zealand if they start locking down even if we stay open but everybody else locks down that could create a negative economic effect so it adds another factor Factor. Obviously, we need to look at Powell, but now the way the Delta virus is kind of affecting financial markets, it could start to get interesting here. But now coming into Powell, our pretty pictures and everything else, what a lot of people are talking about is the bonds. And we saw probably one of the weirdest moves ever. I pointed this out early here in the morning, but if you notice TLT and the bonds, they barely moved. But then today was one of the biggest days we've seen all October or August, excuse me. But if you come here to the three-day chart, you'll see what makes it kind of stand out here. This was Friday. We did absolutely nothing in the markets, if you remember that. But what happened to bonds, this was actually the biggest bond move all week. And then now today, you get one of the biggest spy moves all month. And then sure enough, the bonds don't move. So you even had Powell and all that stuff today. But everybody is going back and forth as the data is coming in. This whole taper talk, the whole bond situation, it is starting to get a little bit more confusing. And even Bank of America here, they've outline their scenarios and they're saying optimistic scenario is the bond yields going back up this is the 10-year bond so this is not TLT so they're saying the optimistic scenario is that yields shoot up the recent range is kind of where 
everybody or every opinion is going to fall in the middle. And then the pessimistic one is the rates coming back down. So the ranges are widening, even the T-bills and some of the yield curves, they're starting to trip out a little bit. We also have the debt ceiling, so don't forget about that. And now what people are talking about here is now that we've saw a big move this month, what is it going to lead to? All of these pressures or events are just adding up to something here. But now a lot of people are looking for the end of the month in Jackson Hole. But now that August expiration and pretty much three of your bigger drops are at least close to 5%. Again, we haven't had a 5% drop in at least 200 or so days. But given the recent influx of option traders and everything else and how the retail market is behaving, a lot of analysts have noticed that some of the biggest market moves are happening on the monthly expiration date. So that would be this August here on the Friday. So why is this important now? Because Jerome Powell and everything else, he said some stuff. I'm going to skip ahead and focus on the main point moving forward. Again, you're going to get the minutes tomorrow. The market is really going to be looking at that. But as the recovery and data situation is unfolding, it's looking like the market really wants to wait for the Fed. It's kind of that holding pattern up until Jackson Hole. And that's why that option expiry is so important because Jackson Hole is happening here at the end of the month shortly after. But now given the risk of overseas lockdowns, unless the Delta situation, if it gets dramatically worse, keyword dramatically, then it might be able to knock the market out of waiting for the Fed. So now we're going to see this push pull and see what is important. Again, you did hear from Powell today. He didn't really say much. It was that student teacher town hall where he was answering questions and the market got jumpy in the morning. Remember at the beginning of the week, we said this wasn't going to be an important event. It was literally students and teachers. It was cool for the education sake. It was awesome in that factor. As far as revealing what Powell is going to do, we're kind of leading into any of the Fed moves. It wasn't really priced in, but then the market after we opened up pretty red, people were saying, well, maybe he might say stuff. We got a little bit jumpy there, but then he didn't end up saying much. You know, a lot of people read very, very deeply into the situation. They got quotes from it. He did say that the central bank's power tools have limitations and he did say that we are not going to a pre-pandemic economy but overall it seemed like a non-event and now we really know what to be watching for you can watch the calendar the dates are important we could look at the volume activity and even the data but now the question is going to be Powell or the Delta virus, which one is going to get better or worse first? And depending on the scale and velocity, that is probably going to dictate our next move here on the market. So it is a pretty straightforward week. I will tell you this before we get into the company events, I got a huge hidden key for you tomorrow, and that is going to be New Zealand. So they lock down today, but now they are expected to raise rates tomorrow and begin their tapering more or less. So this is where it gets interesting because this could set a precedent of how some of the central bankers are going to react, or we might be able to get data to what happens there. If you really think about it, given the two situations that we've outlined already, the New Zealand situation is right in the middle. And depending on what they do, they will be the first to do it and we will see the effects. So that could be a very big key or a canary in the coal mine. We will see what happens. But coming into the news and events now, the first thing, and we've been getting this escalation, it's just kind of slipping beneath the surface here. People aren't really talking about it as much, but China issued another set of draft rules aimed at preventing unfair online competition. All the China stocks, KWeb, Baba, Tencent, the Golden Dragon Index, they got clapped again and hit another new low. And on top of that, you're getting more tensions with Taiwan, but you get that meeting regarding Hong Kong and China that is began today. So depending on how this plays out, we will see, but definitely be on the lookout for any China headlines every morning as you are actually getting a lot of movement and there is still a couple of of other things going on there. So that was the first big piece of news. The second one, this came in after hours here, but the Biden administration is freezing billions of dollars in Afghan reserves so that they can't access the money. They have banks and other institutions have some of their money and they're holding their reserves in different places, but they're stopping the Taliban from accessing that. And then now Republicans are also urging Janet Yellen, the treasury. She is responsible for a lot of these decisions. They're urging her to block the Taliban from the IMF reserve. So 
this one is going to get interesting because you kind of heard some of their first press conferences today. They seem like they're taking a different stance. Uh, we will see how that one plays out, but their currency and what this could lead with the currency situation, this is one to watch. If you remember when it all started to unfold, we brought up the currency. Well, now, fast forward till today, it has dramatically weakened, and now with this situation, them kind of running out of dollars, how it could even affect Bitcoin, the dollar, this is going to get very, very interesting there. So there was that coming into some of the companies now. You did get earnings. HD missed on some of their expectations. Walmart beat, but people sold off a little bit because of the margins. And then we went over the Roblox ones yesterday. But other than that, there was news with Tilray. And this came in after hour. They invested into Medmin Senior Secured Convertible Bonds. So they gave the company money for bonds that could convert into equity. And in this case, convert up to 21% of Medmin's company. And the CEO of Tilray said he would even want more. It's kind of like an option trade on legalization. Depending on what happens, they could pretty much exercise these bonds, get ownership if laws go in their favor. And now Tilray could get access to the United States market. And then they're tying up with MedMen, a pretty big company here already. So that one was very interesting. Another one, I'm going to be keeping my eyes on this. It's going to be related to the place here. Oil posted its longest run of losses since March. And now what a lot of people are talking about is China being kind of the ground zero for that demand, as well as the dollar and how it's not helping out any of these dollar denominated commodities like oil. So we talked about this earlier this week. I want to keep my eye on this, but any other oil developments, but now tying it into the China situation, that is going to be key, especially as we're seeing some market moves start to come alive here a little bit as we get into the month. So there was that. Then Wall Street trade groups, they are urging the SEC to shorten the stock settlement to one day, but they are going against Robinhood's idea of instant settlement. So if you remember the whole GameStop situation when everything was halted, they were talking about settlements and all that. And a lot of people said we need to speed it up from a three-day settlement to now a one-day settlement. Robinhood wanted an instant settlement, but now a lot of these trade groups backing some of the other brokerages, they're saying a one-day settlement is a step in the right direction without increasing risk because they said that an instant settlement could lead to trade failures and increased risk there. So pretty interesting to see that play out. Again, we even got the news on the order flow data. So it's funny to see a couple months later, that situation is unfolding, but a lot of people are not as interested in it, unfortunately. So there was that. And then Como files for retirement benefits. I mean, we just like Como. So a lot of people are kind of aggressive about this one. If he does get convicted of a felony, he will not get it. Otherwise, he could receive up to $50,000 a year in pension benefits. And then finally, this one's very interesting. Short China stocks is now the third most crowded trade coming after long tech stocks and long ESG. That is environmental, social, and corporate governance stocks. So think about infrastructure and all of that. But this was based on a survey that came out. They surveyed a bunch of investors and most of them aligned with long tech stocks and ESG, but now 11% of all survey respondents are saying short China. That is the number three position. So other than that, our work is definitely cut out for us. Things are getting exciting. We're getting data on here. There is a lot of stuff related to the company stuff, but it seems like people are taking a step back and looking at the macro, especially as we're getting into a key time period where a lot is about to happen. So I hope you're ready, but that is pretty much it. So let us get into the play. So right off the bat, I got three different stacks that I'm looking at. I made plays on one of them. I have plays in the other ones, but it is kind of outlining the strategy here. But with the first one, I did make a put play. I've been kind of holding back a little bit. There's a lot of things boiling, but now the issue has been finding the right premium and timing. Even if you watched our K-Web plays and some of the China ones, we hit a couple of them, but it took a while for some of them to come back to life. And even that recent one, I sold out of one of the K-Webs today, the shorter term August, they were only up about 30, 40%, even though we captured about a 9, 10% move on the index, which is wild to think about. So the timing and how it holds up, especially as volatility in the spreads widen, that is going to be the key. It's not so much about up or down, but finding the right derivative or option to match up with kind of how things are moving. So the first play I made was XLF. I got a lot of time on it. I went out till 2023 or 2022, the middle. Yeah, I went out to June 2022. I grabbed the $29 puts on XLF. I grabbed 10 of them at 74 cents. Actually went down a little bit there towards close on the bounce, but surprisingly, this play is within two standard deviations. So $29 is a point XLF was already at this year. And when I 
went back over some of my other EEM plays and all that, I've noticed that the ones with more time coming into 2022, 2023, they held up premium a lot better. Essentially, in the year that I've even held some of them, or even like eight months or so, the indexes went up 80 to 100%, but most of the longer dated puts only dropped about 50%. So I wanted exposure, but I've been seeing the difficulty with the timing, even though we could hit the move on the head. If you run out of time, it's going to cost you. So I wanted to scale in with some time. And in general, financials have been leading and they are the cheapest protection right now in my opinion so depending on how things play out I think I'm going to hold this that's why I went a little bit bigger about $700 but I have a lot of time and then as we start getting in through these weeks and months I will be able to position around it and use that as a key place marker but now just the overall position this one isn't a place marker as much as it is I could start building out this position we'll see how it is but you're starting to see a lot of global developments and kind of even the analysis on bonds all the way down to financials you're starting to get divergence of opinion, and I'm starting to like that one. So that's the first play. The second one is XOM. So if this oil route continues, I think this is going to be a leading indicator. I talked about it last week. I said watch oil. Once we start getting to levels like 60 or even 55 or it breaks those levels, I think it could start to upset the market here. And again, it is tied to the dollar as we discussed, and a lot of people are noticing that now. But one thing I liked and really noticed is that the premiums are still down from when we got this play, but they are starting to move. So last time we saw it, the same exact play actually went positive. I have these January 25 puts. I'm down 40% on them, but they were down a lot more last week, and then they would fluctuate. And this is what we've noticed. If you guys have seen some of these plays, I have some of these old ones, but when I start to see them kind of get jumpy and come alive, you usually kind of get a movement. It's either going to fade away or it might come back to life. And here's a good example, the Babas. This was one of those examples I showed you a few weeks ago. I was down 40-50% just like I was here. They started to show a little bit of life and then all of a sudden they kind of came back out of nowhere. So given the macro context and everything else, oil makes sense. We have the plays on there. I like it, but I am going to be watching that. And then finally, Walmart, they had the best earnings out of the bunch in my opinion over the last few weeks. It was watered down given the negative sentiment this morning. The premiums did get clapped, and I'm really looking at this to be like Disney where it had a good earnings, but then it kind of just sells off instantly and never comes back, or it might be able to come back to life. And it even ties in with another set of trades. You know, one stock I'm even looking at I would keep as a secondary would be McDonald's, believe it or not, and even any of those food trades. But like we're talking about with this push and pull between Powell now and then the spread of the virus overseas, you could kind of see it in certain indexes and industries. Like take a look today, NVAX and the vaccines. NVAX was down, but Myrna was really rocketing. And even on their monthly performance, all of the vaccine stocks are killing it. Come look at the jets, the airlines, and then even the travel stocks like Away. These are all down and they have really been killed over this last month in general. You could just see the pattern here. And then looking at healthcare as well, they've been up. This is a defensive name. And then look at now the stay at home stocks like Zoom and Roku. They've came down as well, but definitely not as much. And even on a day like today, they did not move as much. So these are kind of the barometers or indicators to gauge which side is kind of lagging or leading or getting more push or pull. So I think Walmart fits into that. But like I'm saying, there's a lot of runner ups. It just depends on how things develop here in the next few weeks. But those are the main plays as far as everything else. I did trim uh, a couple of positions. Like I said, I sold out of that K-Web. I got 30% on the August. And why I sold out? Because they expire Friday. And even after catching that big of a move, they did not go up that much. So I was only up 38%. And I have the longer ones. But then I had these Netties ones. We bought it at the same time of K-Web. These are still down 60% even after the morning. So I was like, man, that is crazy. So I sold off those K-Webs within like a minute, took the most premium I can, and now I get to ride out the rest of these K-Webs. These are at least up 40%, so it's not too bad. But that was the first play I made, and then the only other one that we made here today, I sold out of that AMD credit spread. Remember, we were down 3000 on this a couple weeks ago. I was able to close out at $0.06 cents times 10 about $60. We collected $500 in premium, so I got to walk away with $440. It was a pretty stressful trade, but we came out on top. We got to play the theta to our advantage, so that was nice, and I freed up a lot of 
capital, and we talked about it today. I have the Sam play, and if you were in this one, make sure you ask me on stream in the next few days. I am probably going to roll this over. We talked about it a lot and what our plan moving forward would be. So those are going to be the main plays as far as everything else. Again, watch K-Web. Watch NVIDIA. Everything with the chip makers is going to be important here for the rest of the week, but that chip maker index, it's been dropping, and AMD and NVIDIA have been the only ones who have been holding up. So depending on what they do, that will be key. Walmart, like we said, Apple, it has just been holding, and surprisingly, it got some of the most call option activity today. So people are still very bullish on it. It has been supporting the SPY a lot. I will definitely be keeping this one on my eye as just a barometer. NetEase, like we talked about, and then XLF. Then back to all of these stocks, I would look at Roku, Zoom, Away, XLV, Jets, and then any of the vaccine stocks. Those are kind of giving you an idea of the landscape and how things are playing out. And then I want to watch Roblox. They're going to be on Jim Cramer tonight. He talked and tweeted about him today. It was looking good. They bounced. They were down almost as much as like 9% today. So this was an epic bounce. There was a lot of call activity, and it's looking like they kind of fit into the scale of stay-at-home gaming and all of that. So we will see how this one plays out, but I want to see if there is any short-term opportunities with the options. And then finally, coming into TLT and the dollar, TLT was absolutely fascinating today considering how it didn't move, but you saw that first pretty picture I showed you. We are pretty much right in the middle of everything. So now you got people saying this is going to be your optimistic scenario. This is going to be your worst case scenario. So now people are trying to figure it out and it's showing you kind of the heightened elevation and worry that we have now, but nothing has really happened yet. But the real key is, like we said, the dollar, this is some velocity today. We might start to see it move. And if it does start to break out here, especially if it breaks past this 25 point, that is going to be very, very key. So if it does that even in a day or two, that is what we're going to need to watch. And some of the UUP premiums are down. I would not even be opposed to one of these plays, but we need the confirmation. And that's what I've been talking about. We could wait for the no brainer. And that's what kind of sucks in this environment because a lot of little things are adding up here. So it's better to be late than wrong. I don't doubt the ability for an indicator to hit, send these things moving. They come back for a little bit and then it kind of does the final move. A great example is young K-Web, baby. So factoring in TLT and the dollar, I know a lot of you have been looking at these plays, but just think about how this was. You got this move if you were early, you got a little bit of a bounce and then another decline. And then we got in, I think right around here or here. And then it led to another mini bounce and then the premiums came down. So you could either capture 30 to 50% more depending on what happens. But the point is you can wait for that confirmation, have a little bit more certainty and get a little bit less on the trade. And it will pretty much go guide us for what to expect here for the rest of the market, rest of the month, and rest of the year, so I hope you're ready, but that is your watch list, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure Hydra Hilti ready to go. Make sure post your watch list. Make sure we see you there in the morning. I need the armor on. I need the helmet shine. I need to remember if your attitude's good before you get it, it's gonna be all good, baby, but Nicole loves you. I love you. I'm gonna see you in the morning. Let's go! Cool. <laughs>